When we were looking at the American Revolution, we wanted to make sure that players were going to experience the full scope of life in this era. And obviously this is a new frontier for people. This is where humanity is extending out into this vast unknown world, unknown to Europeans. And we wanted to be able to translate that experience and give that to you when you were playing it. We could have taken the choice of just being restricted to the cities, but I think we would have been missing out on a huge amount of what it means to live in this era, in this location. Games are often built on straight lines and rules, uh, and nature has very few straight lines and, and not many you know, rules on the level of sort of visual shapes and sizes. There's no boxes, there's no perfectly flat surfaces often. With a city, you can almost consider unfolding it, right? And it becomes a flat terrain, right? It's a much less complicated problem than a, a forest where you have a fully 3D environment, where you have terrain everywhere and then things going up branches, beams coming out of them, and you know a lot of choice about where you can go at any given time. The world team itself is built up of level artists and level designers. Their goal is to make a beautiful and believable and functional play space. To take the concept of the frontier and to rebuild that and include all the kind of features that you'd expect, you know, streams and cliffs and forests, and then leave enough room for the gameplay. And then when the mission designer comes through after that and builds their mission on top of that, then there's a negotiation process. So they will roughly uh, position it and then go back to the world team and say hey you know what would make this mission even better if I could get you know a bunch of wolves here or if this slope was steeper or if there was a, a dense forest I had to move through as part of this mission and it goes back and forth several times to try and really tighten that mission and deliver the best possible experience. Creating the frontier map which is by far the biggest map we've ever created it's a completely different style of terrain. We were forced to really reevaluate how we do everything about our navigation systems, our stealth systems, and even the combat was drastically affected by this. When you have the kind of fight system we have where we expect to see connection between your weapons, you know, when I block, I want it to actually connect. Doing that on an undulating terrain was an enormous technical challenge for us. When we added on top the seasons, uh, winter was another challenge, or the change between summer and winter would have to disappear during winter or appear during winter, like the tall grass for example. So you remove the grass, add the snow. Snow had to be deformable and we wanted the tracks that people make and animals make in the snow to be remembered. Even if you go a bit further and you come back, the tracks will still be there, so that was a challenge. When we realized that we wanted to have an assassin who was as capable in the wilderness as previous assassins had been in cities, uh, we realized it was a huge challenge. You know, we didn't want it to look like Tarzan and we didn't want it to look like a Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, for example. We wanted it to be believable uh, and tactile. Uh, and we wanted the forest to look real. The number of trees and branches to display, any developer could tell you that the leaves and transparency is, is always costly on the GPU, so a forest obviously was a big problem, so we had to adapt the whole rendering engine to be able to display a forest. To execute the tree running was one of our biggest challenges. Usually when you see a forest in a video game, it's, it's just an obstacle. There are things that are in your way and they're gonna stop you moving through and that's it. For us, it's a playground. You know, just take a few steps here, you'll be jumping up into this thing, and then you'll be just experiencing a whole new navigation that you've never had before. Navigation is probably the strongest pillar of the Assassin's Creed franchise. It's always been beautiful and easy to use and allowed us to traverse all kinds of crazy environments. But when we took it to the forest, we had a whole new set of challenges. Trees are often not flat, they're V-shapes, all these you know, unusual degrees of separation and distances. So instead, for example, of every tree needing to be eight feet high because that was how high the animation was, we built a system where basically it could be anywhere from six to 10 and the animation would work around it. And we did that for all kinds of things, moving between how wide the angle was on, on the V-shapes within trees, how broad the branches were, how far apart they were. And luckily, once you get all of those together uh, uh, and position them in the world within you know, many different degrees of those ranges, uh, you start to get a more natural, believable landscape. We felt that stealth was one of the underutilized features in the game. You know, it became more and more uh, combat and navigation focused. And while we know that we don't want to force people to, to play super stealthily, we want to give people more options. So we built some uh, features in the game such as tall grass or bushes that are mobile hide spots that you can move through and remain hidden so you can sneak up on enemies from a distance. When you're up in, in the trees, you're much less detectable than you are on the ground. We wanted sort of a layer, a branch layer within the forest where you could be above your enemies, assassinating from above 
We built some new tools, uh, such as the rope dart, which allow you to kill silently and create distractions. We have sort of traps in this game, which we built originally for animals. Uh, the idea of trapping and snaring animals in the frontier, but they're also useful against people. So we tried as much as possible to sort of extend the toolkit for players in terms of stealth. For the animals of Assassin's Creed 3, we decided we wanted to create a hunting system and allow you to be able to go after the animals and hunt them. But I wanted more than just sort of reactive hunting. Typically when you see animals in a video game, it's just, oh, there's an animal, okay, I'm gonna kill him, and that's my choice, that's the extent of it. I wanted to be able to bring a sense of tracking animals. If an animal comes along and marks its territory, you know, bears like scratch their back on trees, you know, they do all sorts of crazy stuff. You can analyze the signs, see the footprints and say, okay, there's, there's an animal over here somewhere, I'm gonna go chase after him. Yeah, man. One of the goals was to turn the crowd life of the game into the wildlife, and it was a fun challenge because you can't motion capture animals, so we had to keyframe and animate every single thing. Obviously we used video reference, but we went out to wildlife centres and filmed the animals, just watched them. You can't see them running around, so we used videos for that, but we got the details and like little ear movements, the way they'll shift their weight, how heavy a bear is when it turns around, it's constantly like putting its weight on each leg. We created the hunting map as well, which is uh, basically an overlay on the game map where it breaks up the frontier into various different regions and you can see what animals you've discovered in each region. So if you're looking for a particularly rare or difficult to find animal, you'll have a much better clue of the areas that you can discard because you've already fully explored them. So, okay, I'm gonna have to check up in this corner over here to see if there's a bobcat hanging around over there. I wanted to be able to bring some of that sort of national geographic life of animals to players inside of the game and show them a lot of the behaviors and activities that animals get up to in this environment. We really wanted to show off and do a lot with the animals, not just about uh, navigation and reactions. We wanted to have these specific little magical moments that you'll find throughout the game in AC3. I think we have over 20 different animals that you can interact with. You don't just go and look at them and kill them. Because the wilderness is kind of empty, if it's just trees and bushes, you want to be able to have this emptiness and then occasionally happen upon a deer or happen upon a bear and get into a fight. And it's up to you what you want to do with animals. You can scare them away, you can kill them, or you can just watch them. I'm very proud of what we achieved, especially with the wilderness. I remember three years ago, we weren't sure at all if we were going to be able to pull it off. And today the frontier is massive, it's rich in details, it looks beautiful, and it works. For Assassin's Creed, history is our playground. All of the historical people and events are recreated as they are in a history book or in a documentary, but you, the assassin, are this sort of vein of fiction running through the middle. Boston's a one to three scale. It's huge, the time it takes for a player to walk from here to the end of the neck. Aim, and then turn your head, because when you pull the trigger, this blows up and would burn your face. The revolution would not have succeeded without navies.